What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another episode of JD Plays and this time what we're going to play is we're going to play with setting up a Minecraft server, a 1.12 Minecraft server on a Windows 10 machine. Uh, you can do this on Linux, you can do this on a Windows, Windows server. Um, you can do it on a lot of different, in a lot of different ways. Uh, I've done a tutorial in the past using Linux and I may go ahead and redo that tutorial at some point but today we're going to do this via Windows. Uh, the pack that we're going to use as our example pack is Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles, an expert mode pack made by Freebie Pierce. It's the one that I'm currently doing a Let's Play series on. So, as always, if you find yourself enjoying the video, hit that like button. If you'd like to see more, like it, click the sub button. And if you want notifications for my content, bell icon, I done for you. Let's dive straight into this. So, the first thing that we're going to want to do, step one, is we're going to need to get our files for setting up a server. And to do that, we're going to need to head over to CurseForge and to the Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles mod pack. Now, for most packs, it's going to work this way. Some packs may have their server files in a different location. Of course, if you choose to play those packs, but most of the time, you're going to find it right here. So all we need to do is Google, you know, click the link, come here, and right here on the side of the page, you're going to find a download link for the server files. Clicking the arrow down icon will begin the download for you, or you can come in here and actually look at the uh, details about the server files. Tells you all the mods involved, all that good stuff. But you know, either way, you're going to need to click the download button. That's going to get your download started. And I've already taken the time to download this, so I already have it. And I have actually gone ahead and taken the time to move that into a separate directory on my desktop. So that's going to be step one, get your files, right? Step two is going to be to extract said files. So I have moved the download package into this folder. And I've gone ahead and taken the time to extract the folder so we wouldn't have to wait for that. So in order to, this is the original folder you're going to get. You can see it has kind of a zip, you know, icon. Uh, you'll need 7-zip, WinRAR, some, you know, Windows has its own decompression tool. But something to extract the files with, either via the extract all command or via 7-zip, etc, etc. And once you extract that, you'll be looking at a directory like this. Now, you may not want this to be extracted right here. You may want to put this somewhere on your server or on your hard drive. I didn't mean to say server. Somewhere else on your hard disk. You may want to put it on an SSD. Um, it's kind of your choice, but extract it wherever you want the server to be running. Okay. So once you've got everything extracted and you're looking at this uh, directory, the first thing you want to make sure of is under the EULA that this is set to true. Now, some packs are going to have that set to true for you automatically, but if this is not set to true, when you attempt to start the server up, it's going to instantly stop and you're not going to be able to go any further forward. So you've got to make sure that that is set to true. The next couple of things you're going to notice in here is that we have a forge and a Minecraft server jar. Now the Minecraft server jar is your vanilla Minecraft server jar. That's the vanilla game. We need forge in order to be able to handle modded Minecraft. So if we look at this bat file right here, this batch, we can right click on this and we can go to Edit with Notepad++. For you, you may just go to Edit if you don't have Notepad++ installed, but I'd strongly advise installing it. And it's going to tell us, all right, here's our arguments. We're going to make a command line call of Java, and we're going to give an argument to it that says XMS1024. This means start this application with one gigabyte of RAM, this Java virtual machine. And XMX means I'm going to allow it to have up to six gigabytes of RAM total. This is going to be a jar, and the jar that we're going to be looking for is going to be the one named this. And I want you to start this application with no GUI, okay? And then we're just going to tell it to pause so that it doesn't instantly close itself down. So that's what the uh, batch file says. Now, we're actually going to modify that uh, here in a bit. I'm not going to do it just yet, but I'll, I'll show you the commands that, uh, that I would use to, or the arguments that I would use to modify it. It's your choice how you want to set that up. I'm not going to get into a debate over which Java Rs are good versus which are bad. You can do your own research to decide for yourself. There's a lot of information and a lot of misinformation about Java commands and Java arguments, sorry, and which ones are the best ones to run for a server. Find somebody else to argue with about it. I'm not worried about it. What you're also going to notice when you look in this folder before we do anything is we're missing some, some folders and some files here. We don't have a world folder. There's a lot of stuff. We don't have any server properties. You don't get those until you run the server the first time. So let's run the server for the first time real quick. And this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'll probably run it. And uh, I'll bring you guys back when it finishes running. But we're going to go ahead and double click it. And that'll start it up. Click more info if this comes up. Run anyway. There 
everything is starting up and this is going to take a while and as it runs it's going to start creating some more files in here see some more just popped in we're getting new stuff so i will bring you guys back whenever this completes so i'll see you in just a bit So during this install process, if you get this Windows security alert to allow Windows Defender to pass through the firewall, you're going to want to allow uh, this to pass through the firewall if you're going to want people outside of your server to be able to connect to you. So you're going to want to make some rules to allow it to do this. And that's it. It took about, well, we'll call it three or four minutes. Um, should be done at this point. So right here we can see that we've, we've got these uh, dimensions right here that are being unloaded that that means you're done you're done generating the world you're done loading dimensions and unloading them all the mods have been loaded so if we come back here and look now we're going to go ahead and stop this so there's a couple different ways you can stop it you can hit Control c and that will stop it or you can just type stop and it'll stop the server real quick i'll we'll close everything out of here okay thank you and so now inside of this directory we have a whole lot of new folders right We've got our mods folder. Now this, I think this was here from the beginning, but this is where all of your mods are stored. Okay. You've got your configs. This is where every config for the mods exists. And we've got our world. So in our world, this is where all of our world save data is going to come. And this is where things, I'll, I'll let you experiment and explore. I'm not going to go too deep into this. So the main things that we want to worry about next is going to be this server.properties file. And we're going to edit this with Notepad++. And this is where you kind of set up all of the um, settings for your server. Now, I've got one. Let me see if I can copy this over right quick. And I'm just going to completely replace everything that's in here right quick. You can use the default one if you want. I'll, I'll provide a link to this paste bin for you. And we're going to just kind of very quickly go over what all these settings are. Okay. So right here at the top, we've got spawn protection. This is how many blocks out from the spawn position that protection is provided both from pvp and destroying things on a server max tick time this controls tick time uh you can research that, that that's its own rabbit hole i'm not going to go into it generator settings force game mode you want this on false uh you might want this on true if people are trying to kind of use cheats and things it's i've rarely seen it used I, I don't really worry about it too much allow another pretty obvious allow the nether game mode zero this is survival broadcast console to ops equals true that means anything that happens to go through your console which is your server interface right is going to be broadcast to the ops of your server enable query false this is so that if you wanted to have your server to be pingable by an outside to outside source to report statistics or information that you can allow it player idle timeout how long a player can sit idle before they're disconnected from the server difficulty this ranges from peaceful to hard uh spawn monsters you know do you want it to be pve or peaceful so very you can control this op permission level so you can have various permission levels in place do you want to allow PvP? Do you want snoopers enabled? Uh, I'm not going to go into what the snooper stuff means. I don't really use it. If you want to look into it, go ahead. Now, this one is important for the pack that I'm playing. There are two types of levels that are used in the Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles mod pack for world generation that kind of coincide with how the pack is supposed to be played. There's Default, and there's Quark Realistic. I'm using Quark Realistic. Uh, if you were playing something like a Skyblock, for example, Project Ozone, uh, you might want something like Garden of Glass here from Batania. Here's where you can choose to set your server to hardcore. Here's where you can enable command blocks. This is where you can set how many players can connect to your server. Network compression threshold, resource pack shall. We're not going to talk about those right now. This is your max world size. And here's where you're going to set your port. So by default, this is usually 25565. Um, basically, if you have an IP you're going to get to your friends, they're going to need to know the port to connect on. This is where you set that port. This is where you set that IP. You want to spawn NPCs? Yes, you do. I have my server set to allow flight because a lot of times when you're using the uh, hooks from Dungeons and Dragons, it'll hold you up in the air and the server will think you're flying and it will disconnect you saying you're cheating. So I have that enabled in my world. Uh, this is where you can change the name of your level, your base, your default level. That would be, you know, the Dimension Zero level. And here by default it's set to world. It's your choice if you want to change that. Here you can set the server side default rendering distance at 10. Whether you want to spawn animals, whether you want to have people download a or use a server resource package, whitelisting, which means they have to be on a list that you maintain to allow them to connect or not, generate structures like villages and things of that nature. Is the ser server listed in the online mode, meaning if, if outside uh, sources could ping you, would they see you as online? 
Uh, maximum build height, how high can you build? Can you build, a, you know, this one says you cannot build above 256. If you want to use a default level C, this is where you would plug it in for world generation. And prevent proxy connections, enable Archon. Uh, these are mostly, uh, Archon allows you to send commands directly to the server through an external source, potentially. Um, it's really good for remote controlling of your server. And what to set the message of the day on your server as. So these are the, this is what I run in my single player server that I play on, okay? Uh, you may want a completely different set of settings, but I'll, I'll link to the paste bin that contains this. But this is what my server properties look like. Now, when we originally generated our world, it was not generated using Quark Realistic. So at this point, what we would want to do is we would want to delete the world folder and run server start again and let that world regenerate. But I'm not going to be playing on this server, so I'm not going to go through that whole thing again because there's, it's really not worth it to me. I've already, you know, that's all you need to know about that. So what else do you need to know about? Um, the other big things are, let's talk about for a second optimizing our server a little bit, okay? So depending upon how you've got your server set up, you're gonna want to control these Java arguments a little bit better, right? Like I said, this is saying start our server off with one gig of RAM, but allow it to expand up to six gigs of RAM. So the, the arguments that I use on my server, and I'll go over some of them, maybe not all of them, but I'll pay, give you guys a paste bin to uh, my server arguments as well. Like I said, I'm not going to argue with people about this. Use it if you want it. Don't if you don't. I don't care. It's your business. But here's what mine looks like. So let's actually not let's not do this in here. Let's do this in uh, Notepad plus plus. It's a little easier to read. Okay. So what we've got here is we're saying, hey, we're going to use Java. We're going to look, turn the echo off. First thing is we're going to use the generation one garbage collector. This is my preferred garbage collector. The server that I'm running on has around 72 gigs of RAM, so I'm allocating 24 gigs maximum and starting off with four gigs uh, for the Java virtual machine to run on. Uh, this is the garbage collection interval. This is unlocking experimental options for the virtual machine. This is one of the experimental options for setting a new uh, garbage collection uh, size, the interval in which it's going to try to collect garbage. This is the reserve percentage of memory for the garbage collector. This is the maximum pause that the garbage collector is allowed to put in place when it's trying to collect garbage. And this is the max heap, heap region size. Okay, Everything else is the same. The main arguments most people are going to be interested in are going to be these first three. Uh, I would definitely run, and I do this both client and server side. I almost always use the Generation 1 garbage collector. It's one of the best ones out there. And you're going to want to be smart about how much RAM you assign to your client and or your server for being able to run optimally. But this is my set of server arguments. And like I said, I'll, I'll link to a paste bin for this. Beyond that, the only other real topics you're going to want to uh, take into consideration for setting up a server are uh, how many people are planning to play on that server. Based on that, it's going to determine how much you know RAM and what kind of CPU you're going to want to consider having in place. Um, so I do the, I do the exact same uh, style of arguments, and I'm going to show them to you real quick for my client profile. So for those of you struggling with your client, I'll show you my client args right quick. But you're going to want, if you're planning to have your server opened up to the outside world, you're going to need to make sure that you have a uh, port forwarding set up. What that means is that when someone tries to connect to you, you've got everything set up to allow them to find their way through your f firewall and connect directly to your server. Uh, if you're sitting behind a firewall and the ports are not open, they'll, they'll never get through. They'll, they'll have, their connection will be denied every time. So, one right here out, that one. And so this is my, um, these are my args that I start my client with. So it's very similar to uh, what I run my server with. So I'm running eight gigs of RAM. I start off with 256 megs. This is the permutation size. Uh, ignore past discrepancies. Invalid Minecraft certificates are ignored. Um, my country is US, my language is English. I'm using the G1 garbage collector. I set the interval, I unlock the experimental options. Here's my percent size, here's my reserve size, here's my max pause, and here's my heap, okay? But for port forwarding, um, it's as simple as going into your router, uh, going usually into your security area, and assigning a port forwarding range, something like 25565 to say 25580, right? And that gives a range of ports that you can open. You'll assign one of the ports within that range to be the exact port that Minecraft connects on. 
Um, and you can do a little Googling on that. You, you might, some people in rare occasions have to contact their ISP to get it to work, but it should be something you can get done fairly easily. At that point, you would simply give people your external facing IP and the port, and they should be able to connect to your server. So that's pretty much it, guys. The, the, uh, there's not a lot more to it than that. Uh, feel free to post questions. I'll do my best to try to answer them for you. Uh, if you want to, you know, ask more specifics about Java args or things like that, there's I can reference you to, or I can give you reference to some uh, Reddit threads and some other places to get that information. But that is the short and dirty on how to set up a uh, Minecraft server for yourself using a 1.12 modded client. Uh, for you to connect to your own server, generally you'll just do it through localhost. So you can either do a direct connect to localhost, or you can actually set up a server and uh, set the IP as local host. You shouldn't even need to put the port in there, but sometimes if it's, if it's barking at you or it's not happy, go ahead and set the port in there and you should be able to connect with no problems. So I think that's it. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Sorry if this was kind of uh, spacey, but it should get you at least set up and running your own Minecraft world. And I'm about to go play some Minecraft. So thanks for hanging out with me. As always, dudes and ladies, ladies and dudes, if you enjoyed it, if you liked it, like Oh, I just got a bad lag spike. <laughs> liked it, liked it. Sub button, bell icon notifications. Oh, I stream. Twitch, SJD on 77. Come hang out. Hopefully this helps somebody. Bye, guys.